Hello, I'm Ben Chu, Economics Editor of The Independent. I'm here at the Royal Economic Society Conference 2018. I'm going to be talking with Berzirgen Viliev, who along with his co-author Ulrich Honjo, are the winners of the Denis Sargon Econometrics Prize 2016. So Berzirgen, um, volatility in financial markets has suddenly become a hot topic again in recent months because of the big falls in uh, stock markets uh, across the West. You've done work into volatility of asset prices. This is the work which you won this prize for. So let's talk about what value it is estimating volatility in financial markets. What sort of people uh, could benefit from having a more accurate estimate of volatility? Well, so, so volatility estimation is, is very important in many uh, branches of finance. So that's, that means that's also important for many practitioners in different areas of finance. So this can be um, portfolio allocation. Uh, certain fund manager may want to allocate his, his or her portfolio across many assets. Or it, it may be important with the pricing of derivatives or options or similar. Or it also is very important for financial risk managers. In, in all of these three areas, uh, main input is the volatility estimate. So that's why accurately estimating is very crucial. So volatility to most people who aren't experts in financial markets will sound like a pretty frightening concept because we like things to be calm and stable. But should we be frightened of volatility as a concept? No, no. Uh, it, 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 is just, uh, it just measures it's sort of a measure of risk, and it, it is synonym for volatility is standard deviation or variance. So it just uh, shows how deviates the, the data that you have, I mean. Yes. Now, the work that you've won this prize for is particularly concerned with confidence intervals of yes, volatility, exactly. isn't it? And a normal confidence interval estimate of volatility would give you about 95% confidence that the reading is, is close to what it should be. But you found, didn't you, that actually these typical measures were only giving around about an 80% yes, accurate. Exactly, exactly. With, with many estimators, the, um, if you have realized volatility estimator or other estimators of volatility, it only gives a single estimate of what you, what you want to estimate. For example, maybe you find that the volatility for tomorrow is 0 0.3, mm. which is 30% uh, volatility, but uh, maybe we want more than that in typical uh, in typical situations. We, we want to be able to say the following: that with 95 percent confidence, we believe that the true volatility will stay between 20 percent and 40 percent, 0.2 and 0.4. Usual way to find uh, confidence intervals, not only in volatility but in many other areas of economics or statistics, is uh, based on so-called. Um, bell curve, mm -hmm. uh, standard normal approximation. In, in our work with Ulrich, uh, we find that um, when, when we did this with this normal approximation, so-called uh, purported 95% confidence interval is only is about true, let's say, 80%. Mm -hmm. So that's why um, our approach with Edgeworth expansion uh, mm. is more accurate yeah. uh, than this. Yes, and so was Edgeworth expansions was already a technique which people Yes. Other researchers were yes. using, but you've really rigorously confirmed that it is a better way. Yes, for, 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 for the volatility estimation case, yes. So, so our, our uh, approach um, so, uh, rigorously justifies the use of uh, edge expansions for both realized volatility, which uses five minute returns. So, some, someone might be interested in realized volatility, so we are able to uh, combine that with edge expansions, or someone might want to use may not like realized volatility, but may want to use a so-called noise robust estimator that uses all data. So our uh, work also justifies to use edge expansion even for such estimators. Yes. And do you think your research has the potential to make financial markets more efficient than they are at present, given that traders and investors use things like the capital assets pricing model, feeding your technique into that, does that have the potential to make these things more efficient and run smoothly? In a way, so obtaining better confidence intervals is, is, is crucial. Uh, so, so, and our uh, work adds a certain insight into uh, 
obtaining um, better confidence intervals. And um, fr from that point of view, uh, this uh, may benefit many practitioners, uh, including uh, fund managers mm. or uh, derivatives traders yes. or, or um, financial risk managers. So, Bezirgen, what, what are you working on now? What other elements of this subject do you think might be fruitful to go into in further detail? Yes. So, so other, uh, th there are also other very relevant questions in, in estimating volatility. So one of them is um, to uh, properly control jumps in, in the asset prices. In, in a typical, usual, st when, when you do the standard way, typically you assume, wh which is easiest case, which is that um, stock exchange moves continuously during a day. Mm -hmm. And that's easier to model and easier to work with. Yeah. And uh, a next step, uh, which is uh, a bit harder but more accurate, is to try to uh, take into account the possible jumps. So there may be only a few jumps. And another area to go is uh, in, in, in usual, in, in our work, uh, we, we, do, we only uh, measure the volatility of uh, one asset only. So if you give an asset, Google or IBM, yeah. so we are able to measure the standard deviation or volatility of that asset. But in a, for example, I mentioned uh, that the applications to the um, portfolio allocation. In that case, you have to measure the sort of the covariance, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, risks, also relations between many stocks, yeah. maybe 100, maybe 500. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, doing it in a very in a high dimensional way uh, at, um, brings more challenges. Right, so you could, get, you could measure the volatility of a portfolio rather than just a single, a yes, single yes. asset. So, so for example, if you have a uh, hundred many stocks, then you can not only measure volatility of each of those hundred, mm. but you can also measure any combination. Mm. So you, you can measure how uh, sort of the correlation or covariance of IBM is related to Google. Well, thank you very much, Bazirgan. It was a pleasure talking to you and congratulations again for you and your partner on winning the 2016 Dennis Sargon Prize. Thank you very much.